Hey, what's going on guys? Today's video we are going to be taking apart an iPad mini. And the reason I'm taking this apart guys is because as you can see right there on the center of the screen that is water damage right there. And unfortunately um, it is what it is but the good thing though is that I actually I found this iPad mini. And the reason I found it I was in a rich neighborhood doing a little dumpster diving and of course you know the guy probably threw it in a pool accidentally whatever and he just hooked it. He hooked it with a beautiful uh, carbon fiber um, uh, iPad mini case as well. So I'm really stoked. I'm trying to fix this and bring it back into life. Um, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, go ahead and tear this down, clean up that water, look at the battery and the components, and uh, see if there's any water damage. But you'll uh, see how to take everything apart along the way. So first thing what we're going to do here is because this is a little bit different, than your iPhone. iPhone has screws down here and unfortunately this one does not have any screws down here so this one is completely sealed in there by adhesive so what we have to do is we have to heat up the outer rim here and we have to go ahead and pry that up. Now there is a ribbon down here connecting um, the digitizer and everything down here in the bottom right hand corner so be careful of this area here be careful of your home button. I am going to be using an electric heat gun because I do have one already. But this video is also going to be describing, you know, how to do it in a cheap way. You know, a lot of us don't want to wait for tools. This is a 1500 watt dual temperature heat gun. I'm going to go ahead and blast the uh, the edges here, watching the home button because that is plastic. Don't heat that up too much. And when you heat it up, it's going to get to about you know a good temperature for your finger. You're going to feel some heat. That's when you know the adhesive is uh, loosened up. Now, if you don't have a heat gun, go into your mom's room, go into your sister's room, grab her hair dryer, set it to the high position, and go ahead and blast away. Same thing, just heat up around the edges here, and it'll pry up. All right, so let's get right into that there, and let's fire up that heat gun and show you guys what's up. All right, the first thing we're going to do here is we're going to turn off the device. So you just hold down the power button slide it off. Because mine has water damage, I can't tell if it's off or on. And so unfortunately you gotta take a risk. Or you could just blindly push it and then just slide it right here hoping for the best. Again, mine has water damage so I can't see. Turn your machine off. Let's proceed to the next step. And this heat gun has two settings so we're gonna go ahead and put it on the low setting. Too high of a setting you'll actually melt this thing. These heat guns are pretty intense. So again, we're gonna crank it on. And we're just going to heat up the edge. We're going to go down here. And again, don't put too much heat right on the home button. But again, we're just kind of going to go up and down. And we're going to do this for a little while until, again, guys, the glass is nice and hot to a touch. And while you're prying it up, I'll show you guys, but if you guys need to do a little bit more heat to finish up, not a problem at all. So let's go ahead and see what's going on here. Okay, that's, uh, that's getting hot, but a little bit more would be necessary. All right, guys, now that it is nice and toasty, uh, other people, they use the uh, little jammer in tool, but we're going to try to do this as uh, uh, seamless as possible. So I'm actually grabbing my navigation unit for my iPhone in my car. It has a beautiful suction cup on it. So that's what we're going to use to kind of pry up the outer rim here. So any other suction cup is going to do, but again, I'm trying to do this the cheap way so that I don't have to pay extra money. So anyway, I got the nice suction cup on there, guys, and you just kind of kind of work the uh, work the edge there a little bit, and I see it coming up. I see it coming up a little bit right there, and so what we want to do now is we're just going to go ahead and work that. Again, being careful, and just take your time, guys. That's the easiest thing to do is just take your time. And I got a couple wedges here that I uh, saw in my garage, so I'm going to be lifting up the, uh, the edge of the screen here. And just slowly working it, guys. Again, slowly working it. And eventually, I'm going to be slipping my little tool right here in the edge here. And then grabbing that, and then we'll go ahead and work around with like a tar pick here. Let me go ahead and uh, heat it up again and just uh, take my time and uh, do it again. 
All right, I was able to unscrew and detach my little mount here, so it makes it a lot easier. And so the suction cup method here. And so when you start to pull up on it, guys, here I am, I'm getting a little bit of an edge here. Right there, you can see right where my thumb is. The screen's coming up. And you're going to hear the adhesive kind of rip a little bit. But don't worry, guys. Just go, again, nice and smooth. And what we're going to do is we're going to eventually, we're going to get a nice little guitar pick for the time being. I'm just going to go ahead and slip this in right here to kind of up my edge there a little bit. And with the suction cup method, I really like it because you're not jamming anything hard. You know, some of these guys are using these eye shima little metal tools. And they're like jamming it right in there. We don't want to ruin the aluminum. The aluminum is very fragile on this. Check out my iPhone here. Uh, this was after one drop right here. Not looking too good. Nice little dinger there, etc. So anyway, um, I'm taking my time, guys. I'm not rushing this process. And so um, I'm going to go ahead and leave that in. I'm going to go ahead and take off the suction cup now, heat it up again, and just take my time again. Um, even though I did find this, I want to go ahead and use this and not have to uh, break any digitizers and put money into it that I don't have to. So again, take your time, heat it up again if necessary, and then work your way around. But just in case you do not have any of this stuff, then check out the description box. I'll leave some links where you can read about some stuff, you know, if you want to do that. And I also have an iPhone 5 video where I replace the glass, and I do that a very cheap, cheap way uh, without using glue or anything. Alright guys, now if you do set something inside the edge right here, be careful not how far you slip it in. Just go ahead and just put the tip in right here. And once you pass this little border right here, you're going to be laying it on top of the LCD. So we want to be very careful not to crack that LCD. And so now what we're going to do here, because I have my suction cup, I'm going to go ahead and just remove that. And I got my guitar look and pick thing here. Um, guitar pick works just fine, guys. And I'm sliding it. It's just a little tip right there. And I'm putting it in right here. And I'm just sliding it down and around. Just lifting up that adhesive. Taking my time, being gentle. Going down to the bottom. And I'll stop right there. And then I'll heat it up again here. Um, I'll come back up here. Again, watching your... LCD screen how far you put it in there and again you might hear a little bit of the adhesive coming up just be gentle guys we don't want to crack that glass and we're gonna come around the corner here there we go we're looking really good guys and I'm putting a little bit of pressure up with my suction cup as I'm coming around the edge and we're gonna go ahead again what I like about this little guitar little pick thing here is it borders right here with this little edge, so I'm not shoving it too far. And I actually received this with my uh, old iPhone uh, repair kit. So a bunch of little tools I had laying around still, guys. So again, we're going to watch our uh, camera right up here, but we're not going to hit it because we have our little beveled edge there. Again, just coming down and around. All right, I'm probably going to stop right there and go ahead and put a little bit more heat uh, over here. But we're looking really good, guys. I'm really impressed with uh, uh, the lift up. Here, I'll go ahead and show you guys a little preview here. We're lifting up right there, and you can see some of the adhesive right through there. So let me go ahead and hit it with some more heat and be right back with you. Here I am down at the uh, bottom left edge here. Again, putting a little pressure on it here. And then I'm just, again, slipping my pick under there. We're coming around. We're coming around down to the home button here. Again, putting a little bit of pressure on my suction cup here. Coming straight down by the home button now. Sliding. And again, be very careful now we're down here by the ribbon section. So I'm going to go ahead and stop it again, reheat it, and be very careful lifting this up. I don't want to... When, once it cools off, the adhesive is harder to bring up. Once it's hot, it removes very easily. So again, guys, I can't say it enough. Take your time, heat it up again, and lift it up. Okay, we're almost home free down here at the bottom right. Again, being very careful. Coming around, and we are good to go. We have continued to be gentle with it there, and we are up right there in the corner. 
There we go right there, guys. So I'm going to go ahead and remove my suction tool and carefully go ahead and remove the glass now that it's up, but it's still a little bit uh, adhesive on there, so I need to bring it up gently. All right, guys, now as we bring it up, you want to go top. Okay, camera is right up here. That's the top, top to bottom. Bottom is home button. Okay, you want to fold it top to bottom because your ribbon is right here. Okay, we want to be very careful of this little ribbon right here. And so what we do here is we're going to go ahead and just fold it down. And what's cool about the suction cup is it's still on there. And it's kind of gives myself a little service to kind of work with there. So that's a really cool suction cup. I dig that. So right off the bat, guys, you can tell what is that right there. That is a little drop of water right there. Sorry, let me move it for the camera here because my camera is right in the way. Right there. This is my webcam right here. Sorry, guys. Um, and uh, so that is a little drop of water right there. And so what we need to do is we need to go ahead and clean that because that is just sitting right there on our LCD screen. And uh, as we're looking at it right now, guys, we're looking pretty good. It doesn't look uh, too wet on the interior here. And I'm looking at my adhesive strip right here. And I did a good job prying that up because we're going to go ahead and reuse that adhesive and just latch it right back into play, guys. So um, simple as that. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do, guys, is I'm going to take a very, very soft, soft cloth and I'm gonna go ahead and dab that up here and then eventually I'll get a little air duster and we'll squirt off any dust that lies on there before we seal it back up. All right guys, our next step is we wanna lift up the LCD. And so little tweezers uh, will come in handy but you don't necessarily need them. But um, as we see in the corner right over here, we see one Phillips screw, another Phillips screw here. Underneath this little foam piece right here is we have to lift that up and that will show us our other one here. And again, be careful if you want to go ahead and put that back. Um, so I removed that there. Again, it's just this little, little foam piece there. We'll put that out of the way. And then we have one more down here. Let's go ahead and remove that one as well. Another little foam piece. That one came up a little bit easier there. We'll go ahead and flip that around so we can put that back later on. Now we're going to go ahead and remove one, two, three, four screws here. And what I do to keep track of the screws is I put the one I pulled out right next to it here. This one I put next to it here. This one, etc. So you know how to put it back together, guys. That's the easiest thing to do here. So we got two more screws here, and it is nice if you guys can get a screwdriver that has a magnetic end. That definitely helps out. All right, the next step, what we're going to do here is we need to lift up the LCD and fold it on top of the glass until we can disconnect the battery before we disconnect the LCD. Again, disconnect the battery first, then second, disconnect the LCD. If you disconnect them vice versa, you have potentially a risk of... Um, shorting the backlight or doing some damage to the motherboard. And so what we're going to do here is we're going to grab our little pick here. Alrighty guys, grab your weapon of choice. I chose one similar to this that has a little hook on the end. Again, this is all old tools that I came with my old iPhone repair kits. Um, you know, you don't have to use one of these. You can use a little flathead screwdriver. Just be careful. We're going to get it underneath the whole section here. And the whole point of this is we're going to lift up but we're going to be very careful lifting up. You want to do it nice and evenly all the way around because we do not want to damage the LCD. And the LCD is attached by a little bit of adhesive underneath here, so we got to be careful lifting it up. So just be careful, kind of go one spot to one spot and carefully do it. And we're going to go again. This is the camera. We're going to again fold it this way. So we're going to start at the camera, work our way down, fold it on top right here. All right, I'm very, very carefully, very slowly getting underneath the grooves and lifting it up. You're going to hear some adhesive kind of pull away just like you did the glass. Then go to the edges and you can slide it very gently, guys. Don't crease your LCD. We definitely don't want to crack that. And again, just a very light adhesive on the back. And don't worry about, you can slip your tool underneath there 
Just again, be very careful. The whole point is we do not want to crease or crack the LCD. And it's just a silver flat uh, metal board underneath there that we actually have to take off for the um, to get to the battery section. So don't worry about any cables or ribbons underneath there. It's all flat metal here. So again, take your time, work your way all the way around, loosen it completely all the way up, and then again, fold it. Just slowly working your way, taking your time. There we go. We got our last little pop there. We're almost home free. We're a little bit on the bottom. Okay, we're going to go ahead and lift that up gently. All right, guys, when you have completely freed up your LCD, you're going to bring it up very carefully like this here. And again, try not to put your fingerprints on the front of it. Now I'm going to go ahead and brace it with my hand in the back here underneath. And as you lift it up, these little tabs here and here need to kind of push underneath it so it kind of folds over. And now this is a kind of a part where you need to be very careful. So as I'm lifting up with my hand here, I'm pushing it this way. I'm going to go ahead and push in with my finger here and my thumb here. And we're going to go ahead and get those tabs underneath and so we're going to be able to flip it over again take your time and be careful there we go alright guys now as we can see here I have some water that is migrated itself and it's still a little bit damp through here and I'm looking at my cables and my ribbons my ribbons look good but I got a little spot right here that's all water guys so this thing was dumped for a little while um, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to go ahead and use a little bit of my hair dryer and I'm going to go ahead and probably do that uh, off camera here because I don't want to shoot all my screws and nuts everywhere. I might do a little heat gun actually from a little bit higher above and I want to dry out all this area here. I'm going to go ahead and take my soft cloth and go ahead and uh, wipe that up a little bit. Next thing we're going to do after that if that doesn't apply to you and what we're going to do next, guys, is we're going to go ahead and remove all these screws along the edge here. Okay, so we have uh, right now off the top, I see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. And then you remove that, and then the battery is underneath. And you want to disconnect the battery before you disconnect the LCD or digitizers, guys. Disconnect the battery first second LCD. Alright, so let's go ahead and begin the next step and I'm gonna go ahead and edit this video so you guys don't watch me pulling out 16 screws that's a little bit uh, boring. Again these are very very itty bitty 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 screws so guys just put them right next to the area and do not lose these. Alright, from looking at the screws closely guys the two at the end here, one, two, are longer then one, two, three, four, five. Again, the two ones at the end towards the camera, those are longer, so make sure you put them next to it. So again, be very careful, and it just pops right out. You might have to put your little wedge underneath there a little bit and kind of get it a little bit, but it will go. And once all your screws are done, that is completely out. And now I can go ahead and clean that a little bit better now that it's completely out. The back looks like this. Again, some moisture on there from the water. Look at that. And so I'm going to go ahead and clean all that up. And we'll put that out of the way for right now. All right, guys. And re just remember how to put that back in. Now, as you can see here, here is my problem. All right. So we are still damp in here. Look at this, guys. We have water right here. Let me cut this light. Maybe you can see a little bit better. There we go there. We have some water there, the dark portion. We have a little bit of some hard water marks here, around here, and this here. I'm hoping that the uh, metal portions here that cover the logic board, I am hoping that those were protecting the motherboard from being uh, corrupted. Now, what normally happens in this circumstance when it's doused in water is that some of your ribbon ca uh, connectors or cables will go bad, um, especially your battery. Um, so I'm hoping that the LCD ribbon uh, is okay. And up here, there looks like a little bit of condensation around here. So again, I'm trying to resurrect this thing 
without dumping money into it. A new battery is only like 23 bucks or so, something like that. Again, guys, look in the description box. I'm going to have links for these parts where you can uh, read more about them and, and uh, get them if you need be. But um, So what I'm going to do now, again, guys, is I'm just going to take a little bit of a rag. I'm going to wipe up that water, take my heat gun from a good foot and a half, two feet distance, put it on the low setting, and go ahead and dry that area up. And probably leave this open for a little while and let that uh, dry out. And then I'm going to come back and work on it a little bit more. All right, guys, now what we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and remove this shield piece right here. There are three screws hanging on to this little shield piece, and that's going to expose the LCD ribbon cable, the digitizer ribbon cable, and the battery ribbon cable. And we're going to go ahead and remove this shield with three screws, one right here, one right here, one right here, and we're going to disconnect the battery ribbon. So let's go ahead and do that now. Okay, now we'll go ahead and remove the ribbon shield here. And we'll put that out of the way over here. And again, you can line up your little screw so you know which one goes where. That will go in the middle. And these are all look about the same size. All right, guys. So now we're looking at right here. We're looking at the battery ribbon cable that comes down right by where this area is right here. All you're going to do is it's going to see it. You're going to see it come out of the, the battery here. And it's going to go lengthwise this way. And all you do is you take your little pry tool. And we're going to go ahead and just pry it up a little bit here. And just being again gently. And we'll go ahead and get that ribbon up. There we go. So now that ribbon cable is up. So now your battery is disconnected. Now you can go ahead and move forward and disconnect the LCD screen, which we're going to do right now. That one is located right here. And again, all you're going to do is you're going to take your little pry tool here. Being gently and you're going to get that up on each edge there and that just flipped up right there so we have the LCD detached now now as I'm looking at the connector, connector cables here with my water damage it looks like I'm going to go ahead and have to clean this a little bit here and so what I'm going to do is this is going to be a couple step process here um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get an air duster and I'm going to go ahead and dust it off camera because I don't want to do it right here. I'm going to squirt my screws and nuts and bolts everywhere. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and squirt it with an air duster. I'm going to try to get any you know hard water chunks or, or dust or any debris out of there first. And then I'll show you what I'm going to do next. I'm going to do something that um, is recommended, uh, but use caution and use it wisely is I'm going to use... Um, very high concentrated percent of rubbing alcohol on a q-tip and we're gonna go ahead and dab these connector areas here where the hard water has clumped up and potentially causing a short with our ribbons and down here if you want to remove your digitizer as well that one is located right above the LCD and again you just take your little pronger hook here and very carefully get that ribbon up right there there we go right there so one battery two the big one is the LCD and this one right here is the digitizer now how to completely remove that right underneath the ribbon you're gonna see a little silver kinda of square here right where my tool is here there's a little adhesive underneath that that you have to pry up very gently and then the glass will go ahead and separate completely as well alright guys our next step here now that we have our ribbons disconnected again battery first this one right here connects right there and we have our LCD one right here that connected right here and then we have our digitizer one off now which is right above it right there now what we're going to do to completely remove the LCD it's still hanging on there even after the screws are already done and it's folded back we have some tape right underneath this little edge right here and you can kind of see it right there or my end of my blade is pointing now that adhesive comes all the way up onto the ribbon cables up here kind of folds over and also goes down all the way to kind of the edge of the battery right here now if you want to get really crazy you can go ahead and peel that up completely but I'm gonna go ahead and go a different route here which I saw in another video and it worked out completely fine for him you just gotta be careful guys and do it nice and gently as I'm going to take a nice exacto blade here get right in that little edge 
and when you guys open yours up you'll be able to see it a little bit better and I'm just gonna go ahead and just gently slice right through the little edge of that tape not cutting my ribbon cables of course and that is gonna free up that tape so that I may remove my LCD completely now again I'm gonna be very gentle very careful I'm gonna flip it over here now the other way and get it from the back side here and you can see it a little bit better on this side you can make sure that your cut is a little bit cleaner and again use a sharp exacto and we're just gonna be very gentle guys and we're just gonna go ahead and just slice right through that little bad boy there and again it's just an adhesive tape so don't worry about it alright and the next side is right under here as well and you're just gonna go straight across and then we'll go ahead and remove it and once you're done with that tape It'll go ahead and remove, guys, right there. So here's a little kind of some tape fibers there. But again, guys, it's just kind of like some heavy adhesive tape right there. And we'll go ahead and clean those little fibers up there. But here's our little ribbon cable here for LCD. And so that is our LCD. It's completely removed there. And we will go ahead and get that out of the way. And we'll get that out of the way so that we're very careful not to uh, damage the LCD. Now we're looking at the area where we did our cuts right here. This is the tape right here. And right over here as well. And again, guys, it's just that tape there, so don't worry about that. And we were very, very careful not to damage any uh, ribbon cables with our digitizer here or anything else with our uh, home button down here, our lightning connector, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So again, just take your time, be careful. Now what we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and put a little heat from far away. And underneath this little area here, it's adhesive that is sticking on to our glass digitizer ribbon here. Again, it's already disconnected right here. But we have to go ahead and pry this up here so that we can remove this area right here so that the glass will then become free. Right now the glass is held on right here and it's sitting on this little area here with uh, adhesive. So we're going to use about two feet away, low setting on the heat gun, blast that just for just for a little bit and then we're going to go ahead and take our tool and we're going to get in here like this and gently gently pry up. Alright just about 15 seconds on the heat gun two feet away is all you need again watching your ribbon cables behind you and just gently we're gonna go ahead and lift this up guys here and we're gonna come around get that area over there alright slowly but surely working our way up okay guys we got it up we we're very gently with it now that go ahead and it separates the whole entire thing there so now our glass is completely removed and the adhesive that is holding that down, guys, is right here. There's a strip of black adhesive right here. And we're going to go ahead and flatten that out because we want to go ahead and reuse that. And so what we're going to do here is we're just going to go ahead and flatten that out a little bit, prepare that for our initial setting back in. Because, again, guys, we want to go ahead and reuse that adhesive strip. So we'll lay that flat down again. Alrighty, beautiful. And so again, guys, that sets right down here in that little corner there. Alright, now we have our back completely removed from our front, so we can kind of work our way around it a little bit more, do some cleaning, thorough deep cleaning a little bit. Um, I'll get to that in a second here, but before I get to that, we're going to go ahead and take off this uh, logic board uh, heat shield. And we're going to go ahead and peer into that and see what's going on with that. So if you guys just needed to replace your front glass, just go ahead and replace it with the digitizer. Put everything back in the way you did, uh, LCD, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, for this video, I will not be doing the removal of the battery. Um, I do not believe my battery has a battery issue. Um, if it does, it'd be really nice to have a replacement right now. But what you do is you take a little bit of a heat gun, turn it around, heat up the back of the battery just a little bit, 
And then what you want to do is you want to take a flexible, kind of almost like a paint scraper type of a thing, get in underneath the battery, and you have adhesive going this way, this way, this way, and this way underneath the battery. It's just held in by adhesive. Again, be very careful when you're doing that. Take your time. Get it underneath. A flexible one is a lot better. This one's too stiff. Use a flexible one that you can really get under there. This is even too stiff as well, but you just kind of get your way under there a little bit. Get up that adhesive again. Take your time. Flip it over. Heat up the back a little bit from about two feet away so that you're heating up the adhesive on the back side, not affecting the logic board, etc. And then go ahead and remove your battery. Put your new one in. And before, again, before you install it, you know, put everything back together, then uh, connect your battery last. So, guys, that's the battery removal and replacement if you need to do that. But right now, let's go ahead and get into this logic board. Let's take a little peek in. Alrighty, guys, after looking at the um, heat shield here of the logic board, it looks a little bit complex. Now, you can remove the whole entire logic board, but again, the battery has to be removed first. The way I just explained, there's adhesive, you know, get underneath it, pull the battery out. And then after the battery is out, and if I haven't mentioned before, this one might be a little bit different than yours. This one is the iPad mini with cellular. So I got a couple little ribbons here, not really ribbons, but connector cables. These just prop right up. Um, if you've taken apart an old 3G or 3GS, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. These little circular little tabs here, these pop up here. And then you put a little heat gun on the back of the uh, the back of the iPad Mini on the logic board, and then this whole logic board here is attached with adhesive. Get underneath it very, very carefully, and the whole logic board will remove. Now, if you want to remove this heat shield, there's individual little pins that have been sealed down all along the edge, front and back. Now what you would have to do is you would have to take a very small little tool, jimmy it in there just a little bit, pry them out just a little bit, you know, each and every one on the sides, and then this heat shield will come up. Alright, now in order to check the backlight, I'm going to go ahead and clean it as well. Now under this little thing here is the logic board here. I need to access this, so I need to take off this metal uh, shield here. Very tedious work, guys. I would recommend taking a very sharp flathead screwdriver. This one actually I bent a while ago, so it actually has a little curve to it, so it actually works out perfectly. And what you do is you just get underneath these little things here. Again, being very careful, very tedious, guys. And you just kind of clip it up there like that. Again, being very, very slow. And then eventually you just work your way down the line, work your way over this way, and then eventually it will lift up. So check this out. Here is the first couple of them here. So right there. So the edge is kind of lifting up here. So I'm going to go all the way around it and I'm pull off this heat shield. And we're going to go ahead and take a look at the uh, backlight area because my backlight is not working and it's flickering a little bit due to the water damage. There's hard water right there by the ribbon. There looks like there's a little hard water. Of course, the markings right here. This is kind of hard water here. Now, it doesn't look as bad as I anticipated, so I should be able to clean this and uh, put it all back together, fire it up, see if it works. If not, I might go ahead and uh, put in a fresh battery and see what's up. But um, that's if the battery doesn't hold a charge. But the main thing I'm concerned about is the LCD ribbon cables and the digitizer ribbon cables. Um, and of course the logic board in perfect working condition not water damage so once you get the front it comes up pretty easily after that let's go ahead and remove that guy there and it looks like this let's go ahead and put that out of the way and now we're looking at the logic board guys and this heat shield over here guys same thing just pries up there you can see the little rivets there and that pries up and that's the bottom of it right there and again, we're looking at all the watermarks here, the hard watermarks. I have some right there and a little bit right through there. I'm going to clean up as well. So as we see right off the bat, we see, well, yeah, I see a little corrosion in there, guys. Unfortunately, we have a, a component that has a little bit of um, 
looks like hard water mineral on it as well so I need to clean that as well and around the backlight here now let me show you where the backlight is very very tiny and it's kind of unfortunate here but uh, so check this out so that's about as far as I can zoom in here guys but right over here you can see look at there's water damage here and there's water damage here hard water mineral and right over here now the backlight little itty bitty circuitry board should be right over here in this area right here right where the end of my blade is pointing to now there's other videos where guys are doing micro soldering and they're actually fixing that and it's just this little itty bitty component right here that is way over the head for uh, way over my head um, in uh, soldering experience unfortunately I wish I uh, knew a little bit better but what I'm gonna do guys is I'm gonna um, go ahead and clean this up alright guys so this is what I'm gonna be using here this is CVS Pharmacy 91% uh, I'm not even gonna pronounce that first name but alcohol and again you don't want to be using your household rubbing alcohol guys it's not high enough in alcohol you want to use the top dog 91 percent tile this stuff is okay for electronics now you don't want to be like soaking your q-tip and cleaning it you want to just be dabbing it a little bit here so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pour this into my cap and use my cap as kind of my dabbing little tool just like a little paintbrush I'm gonna dab it a little bit and then we'll go ahead and clean some of those really sensitive areas there again don't soak your q-tip just get it nice and damp and it'll clean those hard water marks right up in that kind of that crustacean of hard water minerals around your cables there. Again, 91% alcohol. Now, the first time I did this with an old 3GS iPhone, I went to like four different stores, guys. It took me like two hours to find this stuff. I was like, forget it. I'm over it. So if you guys are over going to the store, look in the description box below. I'll have a link where you can pick it up on Amazon if you guys are into that. If you guys live far away in the uh, the boondocks country, you know, and don't want to drive an hour to, to the pharmacy. Anyway, let's get back on hand. So let's go ahead and put a little bit of this alcohol in our cap. And all right, we got it in our cap there, guys. All right, now what we're going to do, guys, again, being very sensitive, let's go ahead and zoom in here. And we'll go ahead and dab that up. All right, guys. So what we're going to do here is that our get our cap right over here, and we're just going to put a little bit of mount right on the edge there, just like a paintbrush. All right. Now that we have a little bit right there on the edge, let's go ahead and get in nice and tight here, and let's go ahead and wipe up that hard water there, right around our ribbon area. We don't want to be scraping it. We kind of want to be dabbing because you have very sensitive little things there so we don't again we don't want to use the q-tip we don't want to leave debris behind from the q-tip as you can see guys I'm already just dabbing it just a little bit and it's pretty much that hard water is gone we're gonna use a little bit more here and we're gonna go ahead and dab a little bit more we're gonna get in there nice and tight and what that high percentage alcohol is doing is it's literally vaporizing and causing that uh, hard water to dissipate and just pretty much vaporize so we're cleaning around those very small little itty bitty bitty little electronic areas there guys this is key this is definitely key for a healthy logic board okay and again the reason why 91 percent is so good for electronics is it vaporizes so quickly and it doesn't sit there in your components and rot away and again the battery is disconnected so we don't have to worry about any shorts or anything like that so we're looking good and guys so anywhere where we see hard water guys anywhere we're gonna go ahead and dab it up and when it gets dirty like this guys go ahead and use the other side and we'll go ahead and just go around everywhere where you see hard water so I got hard water up towards the top here a little bit I got some right underneath the camera right there and so just take your time work your way around it and then we'll put it back together now if the backlight does not work after we clean it like this unfortunately you can either sell your iPad as is and go out and get a new one because people will buy your iPad even with water damage for a decent amount of money 
Or the other option, guys, is to buy a working logic board on eBay or Amazon. Um, you might have a tough time finding just a logic board, but or get someone at a college or on Craigslist who really knows what they're doing, who can back up their work and warranty it and give you a you know a replacement one or buy you a new one if they mess up themselves because those components are just too small for my tastes okay I'm gonna go ahead and finish cleaning it guys and I'll be back with you and guys make sure you also clean your ribbons your back of your ribbons not to mention your ribbons right here where my fingernail is here again LCD digitizer this is your battery battery ribbon one right here make sure you clean these and if you have the mini with the cellular make sure that if you see any corrosion in there go ahead and uh, mop anything up right there guys very important now we're gonna head and go ahead and move over to the glass portion the digitizer and we're gonna go ahead and clean those ribbons there the connecting LCD ribbons and the connecting digitizer ribbons alright now we're gonna be looking at the LCD ribbon cable and the only thing that might need a cleaning on this one guys is just the ribbon here so again as you can see right there on the edge right here we have some hard water right there so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna lightly apply a little bit of pressure and get that nice and clean get those connector cables those gold prongs right in the middle as well making sure we have a good connection for our LCD because we don't want any issues with that and then we'll go ahead and use a little bit just to kind of clean that area there now you want to flip over the LCD make sure you have a soft cloth to be able to put the LCD on so you don't uh, scratch it or anything like that and now we want to concentrate on this little ribbon cable here on the back side so right over here we have our ribbon cable we just clean we flip it around and we have this area right here I got some hard water here as well this one actually looks like it connects right here so I might actually flip that little lid up go ahead and pull out that little ribbon go ahead and clean it a little bit more thorough so let me examine that a little bit alrighty guys and so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna clean this as well here so this right here be very careful with this this flips up here just like that again very very careful that is very very sensitive and if you break those hinges there won't be anything to clamp that down with so that goes up to a straight up angle so now it's straight up into the camera there and as you can see I have a lot of hard water on those ribbons there so I'm gonna go ahead and clean that now again worst case scenario if I put this all back together guys and it does not work and let's say I get a weird flicker or something like that well it's probably either a the logic board or B the LCD and so you gotta start thinking to yourself hey do I wanna start dumping money into this that's only with water damage guys um, I know these LCDs have gone down in price there's some really good sellers on Amazon and again I'll leave some descriptions in the description box below where you can check that out as well but let's get back to the task on hand go ahead and dabbing this area here being very careful of that little ridge there we do not want to overfold that ridge the clamp that attaches back on because that's what keeps the ribbons connected and nice and tight so very very carefully dabbing it just making sure that alcohol just gets on that hard water gets those mineral deposits out of those connectors so we have a clean connection I think you guys got the picture after uh, my 17th explanation about that and again guys you know some grit and dirt right there alrighty guys this connector looks amazing now that I dab that again our little flap is up there so now very very carefully let's go ahead and put that flap back down so what we're gonna do here guys is again very carefully you can use your finger if you want actually I'm gonna use my finger yeah so I can apply precise pressure and just put it back down now it's laying flat right there and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my little thing here I'm gonna kinda give it a nice little love tap on the top all the way across 
nice even pressure. And that, guys, that connector is looking beautiful now after I cleaned it. A lot of hard water uh, mineral deposits sitting on that ribbon right there. Alrighty, next before we get to our digitizer, we're going to go ahead and just clean this up right here. And this is a little bit more tedious, but, um, you know, I might be a little bit over the top, but I want to go ahead and get all these minerals. You know why? Just in case, I don't know, I might be over the top, but just in case maybe if the iPad heats up later on, causes these minerals to kind of flake off a little bit maybe, you know, years down the road. So I'm going to get rid of them right now. So you do that to both sides, getting all of those hard water mineral deposits off of the shield going on the back of the LCD. Both sides, and again, that will evaporate. You might have some of this here. You can clean that off if you want with your finger, like that. And you can go ahead and flip it over and do the other side, and then we're going to get to the digitizer. All right, now on to the digitizer here. And what we're going to do here, guys, again, we're just going to go ahead and clean any hard water marks, which we see right here in this section right here. So let's go ahead and just dab that up. Again, and I just love how this alcohol just cleans it and then vaporizes. Just beautiful, beautiful. Okay, and let's go ahead and flip it around. Again, we just have our little, kind of this little logic, uh, little itty bitty board little area here underneath the ribbon here. We're gonna go ahead and fold that ribbon over. Uh, carefully here and we're gonna go ahead and uh, get uh, the back side of this ribbon as well going ahead and just dabbing those gold connectors making sure we have a nice beautiful connection okay beautiful alright before we put it all back together guys we want to go ahead and clean the back side of our glass because there was water in there or if you did not have water damage and you're just watching this for the take apart, you might have touched it, so we don't want fingerprints underneath the bottom here. So an easy way to do it, uh, to clean it, is you can just do it on a flat surface like this with a microfiber towel. Or put your suction cup back on the back side and you can hold it up with one hand and go ahead and clean it. That's what I'm going to do here. So I'm going to go ahead and lift this up here, stick my suction cup on, and I'm going to go ahead and clean this area here and we'll piece it back together. Alrighty guys, it's time to put it all back together now. So let's go ahead and scoot that on down. Let's bring in our glass and our digitizer, which is kind of one piece here. And we're gonna go ahead and set that right here at a nice little angle here. So that we can go ahead and push this back down flat where it was before on that little adhesive strip. And then we are going to go ahead and move forward. There we go. Perfect. Right exactly where it was, guys. Putting light pressure down on that adhesive strip where it was before. And then what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and connect our digitizer LCD, which is right here. And you just want to go ahead and pop it right into that little. And it just pops right in like that. You just heard it there nice and tight put a little pressure right there and again a little pressure back on this little thing here making sure that's flat against the bottom there and now we're gonna go ahead and grab our LCD and this has already been cleaned right here but before we completely put it back together we might give another little little look see at that there and now with the LCD we're gonna go ahead and put it in right here we're gonna hold it with our left hand here and we're going to go ahead and snap our ribbon cable in there. Okay, there we go. And just put a nice little firm connection all the way around it to make sure it's in there nice and perfect. Okay, great. And as you can see, our battery cable is still up here. And now we can go ahead and latch on our battery here, which we'll do that now. There we go. You heard a little snap there again. Even pressure over the whole thing, making sure all the connectors are in play. And we've checked all three of them, and we're looking really good, guys. Okay, now that everything is connected here, 
we're going to go ahead and put back on our little um, shield here for those ribbon cables. Again, it goes this direction here. goes right over those ribbon cables. And again, the three screws that are very, very small guys. And again, if you have a magnetic screwdriver tip, that is always the best. And so let's go ahead and start with the middle one here. And then we'll finish up one, two more. Then we're going to lay our center thing down there. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and lay in our little back plate there. That lays straight down right there. You might have to wiggle it in a little bit. There we go, right along the edges there. Perfect. Now again, 15 screws. Remember that your two longer ones are over here on these holes here. You have the two longer ones here which are right here and here and then your little itty bitty guys all the way around here and then here and then lastly we have remember when we screw back in our LCD the very tip ones go for that. Okay let's go ahead and screw those in. Let's start with our long ones here and sorry guys I think I pointed to these as long ones but this is actually the long one here. This is for the LCD edge there. Let's go ahead and screw that one back in. All right, our 15 screws are in. Our 13 small ones, all this side are small ones. And then one, two, three, four, five small ones, two little bit of larger ones. And we still have the four here. Now, I take back my comment if I didn't, if I didn't mention this, but small ones go here in these corners. Large ones go in these corners, and then we'll put this one back again uh, underneath here, and that will go ahead and lay down. So now, now let's go ahead and fold down our LCD carefully, and that goes right down here, and again lies down really nicely here, and we're going to have to clean that LCD, and that pushes right down there. And now you can see where our screws go down right here, any of these slots here and here. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and get each one of these screws in. One, two, three, four. And then we're going to go ahead and clean our LCD very, very carefully. Um, but let's go ahead and put these screws in first. So here is screw number one, just like we did on the way out. Okay, nice and tight two, three, four screws, then we clean it. All right, and remember our little foam pieces we took out here, our triangle and then the little one down here, you can go ahead and reapply those little foam pieces there. And then we're gonna go ahead and clean the uh, LCD. All right, and LCD here, you can take like a little you know, computer duster here, kind of spray off that lint there. That will be the kind of the final step. Now that all our screws are out of the way, we can go ahead and do that, but I need to clean some smudge marks that I put on there. Microfiber towel, see the smudge right over here? Very gently. We don't want to scratch anything. We just want to buff that out a little bit. And again, we're going to go ahead and do that there. So we're looking okay right there, guys. Got another little smudge here. Let me finish this up. We'll give it a little blow with the um, computer duster. And then we'll seal her back on up. All right, now we're going to grab our little all-purpose for electronics duster, our little hose on the end of it. And again, when you're kind of hovering over it, and if you are talking like I am now, be careful you don't hawk a little spit out of your mouth onto uh, the LCD because then you have to clean that as well. So let's go ahead and spray that. There we go. Beautiful. Let's seal her on up. Okay, there we go there, guys. And we're going to go ahead again and use the same adhesive. It's very strong, so we're just going to go ahead and seal that on in, just making sure we pull out all any lint on the around the edges that might affect our uh, beautiful um, screen from pressing in. And I'm going to go ahead and do that now before we go ahead and seal it on top of the adhesive again. 
And when closing it up, guys, just make sure that the bottom edge is aligned. And if you need to, you can go ahead and push down with your finger a little bit. Beautiful. That's sexy, guys. And we're going to have to get a little bit of adhesive that's come up right there in the edge, but we'll get to that in a second before we completely seal it in. And just clean up any little itty-bitty areas, anything that um, has kind of uh, seeped through a little bit. Any lint, go ahead and get it right out of the corners so we can have a 100% beautifully sealed iPad. All right, now that we're aligned down here, before we completely put pressure all over it, we're going to go ahead and remove our little suction cup here. And what we're going to do, guys, is we're going to just make sure it's kind of lightly sealed so that nothing gets in. Then we're going to take our microfiber rag here, and we're going to go ahead and thoroughly clean it here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to look for any lint or watermarks still inside the screen before we completely seal it down. Now, I'm not using a lot of pressure when cleaning this because I don't want to seal it completely because I don't want to have to heat gun it back up. So I'm going to clean this whole entire thing. I'm going to look it over. I'm a little bit more over the top, I guess you can say, than some folks. But I want to make sure not even one little piece of lint is underneath that screen because I want this thing to look perfect. Alrighty, good thing I didn't seal it up completely because we have some smudge marks here and here underneath the glass from when I cleaned it from the hard water marks. Let's go ahead and zoom in see if we can see that a little bit here. There we go, right there and right there you can see it right over here so we're gonna go ahead and lift it up very carefully with our suction cup again clean it underneath put it back down do it all over again very tedious but if you want it perfect that's the way you have to do it guys alrighty guys it looks beautiful and if you guys want you guys can go ahead and put new adhesive strips on the bottom and I'll go ahead and put that in the description box but I'm not gonna. The uh, old adhesive seems to be doing just fine. Um, I didn't even seal it all the way, and now I'm applying pressure with my finger all the way around the edge while I'm cleaning it to give it a nice, very beautiful seal so it goes back right into the corners where it needs to go. Sealing from all the outside dust and debris being careful of the home button course. Don't want to put too much pressure on the home button. And just beautifully, beautifully done, guys. Again, take your time so you don't get any lint under the screen, and that is absolutely gorgeous, as you can see, guys. Just a few little smudges remaining, and that's it. So make sure the whole roundabout edge is completely sealed. We're looking really good. And that's how you clean your iPad that has been dropped in water um, hopefully it will work for you guys if you fire it back up. If not, now you know uh, how to take it apart and buy the right parts you need. So um, I wish you guys luck. I hope you guys wish me luck. Hopefully um, everything is good with mine. And it will fire up and be good. If not, I'll have more videos about uh, dissecting which parts are which. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Again, look in the description box below for the tools I used in this video. Uh, parts and accessories, you can read more about them and even purchase them yourself um, in the description box below. You guys take care. Enjoy your day. Bye-bye.